The key thing to remember is that when we're solving, we're finding the x-intercepts. Well, what does y equal at the x-intercept? Zero. So what we're doing is we're taking y, making it zero, and then we're going to solve by completing the square. So what was our first step to completing the square? Move the constant, so we're going to subtract 7. So negative 7 equals x squared plus 6x. Okay, what did we do after that? Found. Go ahead. We we divide B. So you have the right idea. So we're finding C. So what's our B term here? Six. So six divided by two squared. That's three squared or nine. So we're going to add nine to both sides. And it's going to come up here. So after we add 9 to both sides, we'll get 2 is equal to, and then when we factor this, we'll get x plus 3 squared. Okay, so up to now, everything's been identical to what we did on Friday. But here's where, thing, here's where it changes. If we were doing um, vertex form, we would still have a y in our equation that we would then move the constant over. But we don't have a y anymore. We're solving for x. So now we're going to solve by square roots. What? So to solve by square roots, we're going to square root both sides. So we have plus or minus square root 2 equals x plus 3. And then we subtract 3 to both sides. So negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 2 equals x. And you've just solved for x. Okay, so again, the big difference is when we're solving, we don't just move the constant back. We square root both sides to solve for x instead. If we're going to vertex form, then we'd still have a y there, and we'd move the constant over. Questions at this point. Um, since asking her Friday, I'm confused. Um, so that means you need to watch the video to get the steps, because the steps are all in that video. Jay, what was your? So when we do them, we have to square root all of them now. Yeah. So we're gonna go that extra step now. <laughs> from here. So instead of, because we don't have a y to, to solve for. So we're going to square root and solve by square roots. Sounds good. Huh? No, because we're doing, there, it's the same method, you're doing two different things. So Friday, we did writing in vertex form to where we had two letters, so we got y by itself. But here, y is zero, so we're actually solving for x here, not just writing it in vertex form. Okay. So this is what we're going to do on all four of our examples today, is we're going to solve by completing the square. And one of the things you'll notice is that y we already said equal to 0 for you, so you don't have to worry about that part. We're just going to go through the solving. <clears throat> so step one, move the constant over. So for those who are absent, we're going through the steps right now. Step one move the constant over. Okay, then we need to find C that we're going to add to both sides. I put those blanks in there when solving to remind myself I have to put the number on both sides, whatever it is. So that's all those blanks are for is as a reminder to add the same thing to both sides. So what is our middle term? 16. So 16 divided by 2 squared. So that's 8 squared. So that's 64. So we're going to add 64 to both sides. 
Then we're going to factor and simplify. So when you factor this, the shortcut way to do it is you look at what did you square here? 8, so it's going to be m plus 8 squared. Equals, and then what's 59, negative 59 plus 64? 5. Five. So from here on out, the completing the square parts done, we're now solving by square roots. So square root both sides. And subtract 8. And there's your answer. It does matter. It has to be in front of the square root. Or the the eight that can go behind. Yeah, okay. it's just convention. We tend to put it in front. Okay. What's up, gentlemen? <laughs> Which part? I'd rather you not lie to my face. Yes, Reagan. Um, if you can, like, square, if you can square root it, you Yes, and we're going to do something like that that can be, and I'll show you how we do this. <laughs> okay, so number two, we're going to go through the same process. So we're going to move the constant over. Oh, I forgot to leave my blanks. <coughs> So move the constant over, leaving blanks to add C. The C it will be 4 divided by 2 squared. It does say 165. Is that OK? Oh, see, but I think it's very acceptable. <laughs> I said that was very acceptable. Okay, so we add 4 to both sides. So when what does this left side factor to be? Looks like this should be a What did we end up squaring here? I know it's kind of hard to see cuz I negative 2. Cuz it was negative 4 divided by 2. So we're going to have t minus 2 squared. What's 165 plus 4? Okay, so now we're going to solve by square roots. What's the square root of 169? 13. See, that's why it was such a great number, because it let us have a perfect square. So when it's a perfect square, you want to make sure you take the square root. <coughs> We're going to add 2 to both sides, so we have 2 plus or minus 13. Now because unlike the first one, we can't add negative 8 and root 5, but we can add 2 and 13. Yeah? Wait, so when you divided the 4 by the 2, you got negative 2, right? Well, it was negative 4 divided by 2. Because see how so this is, two. so that's how we got negative 2. Well, we added 4, but when we factor, you take what, what you squared. Oh, okay. So you don't, so this one you do plus minus 13. Never mind. Okay. So we have 2 plus 13 and 2 minus 13. So that's 15 and negative 11 as your two solutions. Hmm? So Reagan, does that kind of answer your question? Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay, but when your graphing is going to be in vertex form, we're going to use completing the square to turn it into vertex form. That you just so you just graph it there, which is what you guys were good at in the last unit. It was factored form that you guys struggled with, but you guys were good at vertex form. Okay, number three. So this one 
How do we start? Move the five? Okay, we really just have to add the three. Okay, because we're, the whole point is to get all the constants to one side. So if we move the 5, we get negative 8, just have to move it right back to be positive 8. Yeah. So rather than doing the double work, just add the 3. So 2v squared minus 16v equals 8. Okay, so now this one, our completing the square is a little different because we have this number in front now. So do you remember how we do this? Take out the 2 from just this left side, and our blank is going to go on the inside equals blank, 8 plus blank. Find our C, so we use this factored middle term, so negative 8 divided by 2 squared negative 4 squared, which will give us 16. But what's on the right side? It's 32, because we have to remember that that 16 has to get multiplied by 2 before we add it to the other side. So I factored out a 2. Uh -huh. So what's 16 divided by 2? Uh, 8. <laughs> the 16 is our C. Uh, okay. Got it. Do you follow why we have to add 32 yeah. together? Okay. Yeah. I you what? I know how to do, but I don't know why. Because we're balanced, keeping our equation balanced. So because the 16 is inside parentheses, where a 2 is being distributed, if we were to distribute it, what number would that actually be? 32. So to keep our equation balanced, we got to do a 32 on the other side. Okay, so next up we're going to factor. So how is this going to factor? V minus, four squared. V minus 4 squared, and then this will equal 40. Divide by 2, because now we're solving by square roots. So V minus 4 squared equals 20. Square root both sides. V minus 4 equals plus or minus the square root of 20. Can we simplify the square root of 20? Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, how do we, it's not perfect, but we can simplify the radical. Who remembers how we simplify radicals? You do your tree. Okay, so we have a pair of twos. So this will become plus or minus two square root five. You have to do it, yes. We've done them before. We're not doing decimals if that's what you're talking about. But we've always simplified our square roots if possible since last semester. Would you add that first or would you ever do any other like four plus two and like We can't because order of operations we'd have to do two times root five first, which we can't do and then add unless we go and get decimals. And we're not doing that. We're leaving ours in exact <coughs> Okay, last one. Someone tell me step one. <laughs> Negative 20 to the other side. Okay, someone tell me step two. What is C? Negative, well that's B. So we get 16. So we add 16 to both sides. Okay, now what? Now you have to uh, put it in uh, parentheses. And how do I do that? Um, you would divide and uh, see what goes into 8 and 16, right? No? X 
minus 4 squared. Do you want to let Peyton know how you did that so fast? That's the quick way to factor these. And it only works because of how we found C. So it doesn't always do this, but it does in these types of problems. <clears throat> okay, so then over here we get negative 4. So we solve by square roots. So we get x minus 4 equals plus or minus the square root of negative 4. What does that mean? Okay, it means you have no x-intercepts. Okay, this is the last day you'll be able to say that. Really. Tomorrow we're going to learn how to actually do negative square roots. Really? Huh? So today if it comes up, just write no x-intercepts or none. Tomorrow, and in reality it'll always be no x-intercepts, but we're actually going to be able to find a number. But it's an imaginary number. Imaginary? What? <laughs> Ensley. Can you take the square root of a negative? So that's why there's no x-intercepts. Kind of how even in the last unit when we would have um, the graphs that were all above or all below, we, didn't ha we couldn't factor it. Same idea, but this is now why it can't be factored. Okay, tomorrow we're going to actually learn how to simplify those kind of square roots, but today you get to say no solution or none. <laughs>